Okay, uh, big welcome to all of you. Um, I don't know, are more people coming in or maybe not, but um, it's great to be here. And uh, I'm gonna be talking a little bit about how my company, um, we're a small independent company, um, bootstrapping, and yet we compete with one of the API giants. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's great to see um, it's great to see so much innovation at the, at the, of the big companies, but I think there's also a lot of innovation of small companies in the API space, and so I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, uh, great that so many of you came. I was a little worried that not, not that many people would be interested in this talk because we are kind of small. So um, I originally thought of a, of a more, more interesting title, um, but that didn't get approved. But, um, so I live here in Barcelona. Um, and I, and I thought by, by being a little more antagonistic to Google, we would get a bit more interest. Um, this got rejected, though, because um, it's, it's not just my API. I actually do have a co-founder and a small team. Um, while we are doing well as a business, no one at Google is actually getting hurt. Um, we're competing with one tiny piece of Google Maps, not, not with all of it. Um, and, and I live in an apartment, not on the beach. But still, you get the idea that we are um, the small guy is fighting against the big guy, and hopefully, um, by telling you our story, we can share some of the lessons and, um, that can help you in your own businesses, whether you have your, your own small business or whether you're a part of a larger organization competing in the marketplace. Um, yeah, so um, as I said, I'm going to be sharing, sharing some tips about, about how we compete. Um, and, and I don't necessarily mean technical tips. Um, the, the reason I wanted to give this talk is that um, there's a lot of very valid technical advice out there. Um, and, and I'm sure many of the speakers later today will be sharing uh, technical insights. Um, and of course, that's great. You have to have a high quality product um, from a technical standpoint. And um, also, there are lots and lots of blog posts and, and lots of advice about you need to have good documentation and that you're, uh, in, for an API, the documentation really is the product. And that's, of course, completely true. Um, so I encourage you all to work on your documentation. But um, what I've seen in, in, in my own API journey and, and with our business, and we've been doing this now for a few years, is that we, um, there's limited advice about, about the strategy of how to position yourself and how to compete with the big guys. So um, hopefully by sharing our story, you can, you can learn a bit. Um, yeah, so I'm going to briefly introduce our service. Not, it's, it's, it's not a sales pitch or anything like that, but just to give you the context so that you know who we are and what we do. And, um, and you can see how we stack up against, against Google, um, who's our main competitor. Um, so yeah, we do geocoding. Um, so usually at this point in the introduction, when I tell people we do geocoding, they say, um, right, geocoding, what is that? Um, uh, so um, geocoding has to do with location. That's the geo part of it. Um, and, and fundamentally, we help people address the question of where are we. So here's a very nice map from OpenStreetMap. Uh, you can see the pin, it shows exactly where we are. Um, but if I go around the room and ask all of you, um, where, where are we, um, I, I'll get probably a lot of different answers. Um, so some of you will say, maybe if you're not from Barcelona, you say, oh, we're in Barcelona. Maybe if you're visiting from the States or Australia or something, you might say, oh, I'm in Europe. You might give the precise uh, address. Uh, some countries like to use postcodes for how they refer to location. So there are many, many, humans have many, many different ways to refer to location. Um, and, and one of the challenges, of course, those, those ways of talking about locations change over time. People do this in different languages. Um, so uh, again, being based here in, in Barcelona, we've had, had some experience with this in the last couple, um, couple years. There's lots of um, fluid situation. It's a bit dynamic. Um, but the point is, uh, humans talk about locations in different ways. And, that's difficult for computers to grasp with. So computers typically talk about location in this way. We have a longitude and latitude, um, which is excellent for computers because it's very precise. And you can go down to the nanometer level. But it's, it's useless for humans. Humans have no idea where this is. So we need a way to translate between these two. And that's geocoding. That's what we do. Um, so you can give us a place name, and we'll give you a latitude longitude. That's known as forward geocoding. Or you can. Uh, give us the coordinates, and we'll give you um, the place name. That's reverse geocoding. And that's what our API does. Um, here's a, you know, kind of a technical uh, high-level diagram. You send us a query. We pass it to many other different um, open source geocoders that we run. 
Uh, the biggest of those is built around a service called OpenStreetMap, which um, I guess many of you have hopefully heard of, but if not, it's kind of a, a Wikipedia of geodata, a, a crowdsourced um, repository of geodata where anyone can edit and contribute, and it's become quite big. Um, but we also do many other ones, and there are some smaller ones that are um, country-specific and things like that. Um, and so we're providing kind of a robust enterprise-level infrastructure around these different uh, open source software packages. Um, the main differentiator we have is that we use open data, and, and this will become important later when I talk about how we compete with Google. Um, but because the data is open, that, that has many, many uh, very positive attributes. So you can display it on any map. You can store it as long as you want. Um, as I said, uh, one of the main repositories is OpenStreetMap, so you can fix it. So um, when, when, some, when you notice uh, the world has changed or, or something's broken, you can fix it. Uh, you can get creative in your use cases. And finally, these are, um, data sets are available free of cost. So that enables us to offer our service at a, at a very low price point because the customers are not paying us for data, they're paying us for operating the service. Um, again, so, so it's just a REST API. We have lots of different SDKs. Um, many of you are developers, uh, so here's what a query to our API looks like. There's nothing uh, magical about this. It's very standard. Um, and, uh, but I'm just trying to give you some background so you have the context of what we're doing against um, our friends at Google. Um, so despite the fact that it being, it's quite basic, um, we've, we've managed to win quite a few customers. Um, here are a few logos of some of the customers. I put in some of the Barcelona companies that maybe some of you know or work of, um, some, some other brands that maybe you've heard of. Um, but um, basically, it's, it's, it's a growing business. Um, so again, some background about us. We, we operate on a SaaS model like, like many other um, API services. So, um, you know, there are different pricing tiers, small, medium, and large. Uh, and, and we've been doing this now for a couple of years, and it's, it's going well. So we're, we're winning customers all around the world. Um, lots of different use cases for geocoding. And anyone who has questions about that, I can go into detail about it later. But um, again, I want to keep this very high level and move on to um, just give you enough background so you know how we compete against the giant. Um, right, so our main competitor is, is this company, Google, um, a little startup based in California, um, or they were about 20 years ago, and now they're, now they're of course, one of the biggest companies on the internet. Um, they're, they're quite big. Is, is anyone here from Google? <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, but of course, we're not, we're not competing with Google in general. Um, we're competing with uh, their Maps platform. I'm, I'm going to guess um, it, probably every software developer in, the, in this room has at some point played around with Google Maps. Certainly as a consumer, I'm, I'm sure you're all aware of it. Um, so it's, it's a massive service. It does many, many amazing things. Technically quite, um, quite impressive. Um, so given that, given that we're quite small and, and Google's quite big, how can we win in this competition, right? Um, you know, what chance do we have as, as the small new entrant, uh, you know, um, with all respect to Barcelona, based in Barcelona, not in Silicon Valley, um, uh, you know, do we stand a chance? And, and so the way, that we, the way that we think about that um, when we embarked on our journey is, um, well, first of all, what, is it, what does winning even mean? Okay. And uh, this is one thing that I find in a lot of the, the discussion online about the, the tech world, um, you know, be it in, uh, the, there's a feeling that to win, you know, I, I, need to, I need to actually get Google to give up or uh, I can only win if, if, if Google surrenders, right? And, and, and that's not gonna happen, right? That, there's no chance of that. Um, so, so then you might say, well, maybe I just need to build a massive, massive business that I become, I'm generating so much money, I can, I can win in, in other ways with all this money, right? Um, and, and that's also fairly unlikely, right? I'm not, I'm not um, you know, that's, that's not really what we're trying to do. Um, although it is cool to observe these guys um, competing, right? But um, what we think about of winning for our business is, can we, can we have happy um, customers who um, keep spending money with us, keep asking us for more, keep um, uh, referring new customers to us, um, who keep renewing, uh, and as a result, we have a stable and growing business. 
Um, and, and that then means we can, we're able to give back to the community, we're able to invest in our team, we're able to, um, to, to train ourselves. Um, to, the, in giving back to the community is actually a big thing because we, we, our product is totally built with open source software, built on top of open data, so we do quite a lot there to um, invest in the software, but also um, develop that community, sponsoring events, uh, all these kinds of things. Um, so the end result is that we feel like for us to win, um, no one else needs to lose. Okay, so, uh, and, and I think this is a mindset that's sometimes missing, in, and we feel like, oh, well, my API, you know, if someone else is using another API, I have to convince them to use my API. I need to steal them away from the other guy. And I'm not, I'm not sure that's really the case. And actually, in our case, many of our customers use our API and Google's API, um, depending on the context. Um, and so, you know, when I, when I put this picture up of what do we need to do to win, if you look at the picture, the two guys are literally battling fencing there. Um, and very important is in the background, you see there's a scoreboard. So someone is keeping score, and one person's going to have more points than the other points. And in the end, there's going to be a winner. Um, and, and that's a convenient model, but it doesn't really reflect the reality of what we're doing. Um, and so the, I think in, instead of the sport or the, or the game or the competition where there's a score, we prefer to think of what we're doing as more a sport like this, like skateboarding, right? where there is no winner. The way you win at skating is you go out and you have fun. And you, and you, you learn and you improve and you push yourself and you try new things and, and you hopefully succeed those things. And you know, this guy is here doing, doing this cool trick, but you see other people are also skating in the background. And we don't need to, um, it's not a competition in that regard. Um, and that's, that's kind of the focus that we think of. Um, and so instead of, trying to beat the other guy, and what I need to do is find my own space for my service, um, where, where we can skate and do our own tricks and improve, and hopefully over time we, we do something cool, and if people want to join us in that space, that's fantastic, and if not, we're still doing our own thing. Um, so how can we identify space that the, the giant is not filling, right? And so, as I said earlier, Google has a very, very impressive um, technical infrastructure uh, but they also do have some weaknesses, and, and these are what we kind of identified as their weaknesses. So they have very onerous terms and conditions. Um, they, they are quite pricey because they have cars that drive around and, and collect all this geodata. Um, but not just that, but there, there are some aspects of their pricing model that are scary for the customers, and so we focus on those. Um, they're huge, and, and uh, so you know, it's difficult for them to focus on any one thing. Is kind of relates to the final point that geocoding gets lost in the clutter. Um, and of course, all of you are, are digitally active and I'm, I'm no doubt aware of all the issues around privacy that have come up, not just with Google, but with others in the last couple of years. Um, so going, let's look at how we're gonna attack all of those. So in terms of the terms and conditions, because we're using open data, our terms and conditions are much more generous. So for example, if you geocode with Google, you have to display it on a Google map. You're not allowed to display it on any other map. With us, you can use any map. If you want to use a Google map, you can. If you want to use OpenStreetMap, you can. If you want to use your own map, that's fine. Um, with Google, you're not allowed to store the data as long as you want. You have to refresh it after a while. But because we're using open data, we can be much more generous than all of this. Um, so that gives us a big advantage on the terms and conditions. Um, moving on to the point of pricing. Um, so our pricing is flat fee. We do have different price tiers based on the usage you want, but unlike Google, who has a usage-based model where they say, um, you know, you get up to a certain amount, and then after that, your bill starts running up, all of our discussion with, with customers is that they absolutely hate this model for the main reason that they don't know what their bill is going to be. Um, and every single customer, every large customer has a horror story of, you know, all of a sudden their, their, their site you know, became super popular, there was a surge, and they get a, a very unexpected bill. Um, and so what we do instead is we say, uh, we have what we call soft limits. Um, and so you, you pay for a certain amount. If you need to go over that amount, you go over that amount, it's no problem at all. And if we see that you're continually going over that amount, then at the next billing period, we ask you to move up. But you'll never get a surprise bill. Um, uh, the other point is you can pay in any major currency that you want. And this is something I see a lot, of, a lot of companies don't do, and I don't understand it. They charge only in dollars, or, or maybe here only in euro. Um, and, and if any of you have been watching this, um, the latest episode of Brexit, 
you've seen you know, the currencies moving all over the place. It's an absolute disaster for, for people in the UK. And as a result, their bill is different. If they're billed in euro, but they run their business in pounds, all of a sudden they, they, there's a differential and it's an unexpected surprise. And all of this adds up to the point that um, with our service, our costs are completely predictable for the customer. Whereas for, for someone like Google, it's unpredictable. And there are many customers who really value predictability. Um, uh, so Google is massive. Um, and, and while I do think many of the employees at Google, of course, care about the work that they do, that's not always reflected in, to the customers. Um, so it, it's quite funny, because I often need to actually remind customers of this, because they, um, they're so used to being ignored by the giant. So people will come, will send us feedback, and they'll say, oh, I put, you know, I tried this on your site, and I tried it on Google, and Google gives me a different answer. And then, you know, we'll have a discussion about that by email, and then I say, well, what did Google say when you asked them about this? And they say, well, obviously no one at Google would answer my email. I mean, you know, and then at that point, a light bulb goes off, and they say, oh, well, with you guys, I'm actually able to have a conversation, and with Google, I'm not. So that's, of course, a major advantage that the small player has that the, Google, uh, the Googles of this world don't have. And you should really focus on um, you know, providing that service, but also making the customer aware that, like, look, I am providing you service. And this is something the big guys won't do. Um, privacy, uh, this is something, obviously, um, has been a major issue in the last years with the, the scandals with Facebook, but also um, the GDPR legislation here in the EU. Uh, I think GDPR is a great chance um, for, for us here in Europe, for startups in Europe. Uh, and I see it, we, we get many customers who don't want to share their data with Google. Um, and we try to really use it as a, as a selling point. Um, and we try to make it very clear, dear Mr. Customer, the way I make money is you pay me. Not you give me some data and then somehow I do something with that data on the side. And I'm not going to really be clear with you about what that is. No, you pay me money and I provide a service. And a lot of customers really like that straightforward model. Um, we, we added actually a new parameter to our API so you could say no record. And, in, and if you send us that parameter, we will not log your request at all. So I, I have no ability to see what your request was. Um, and uh, this, as a result of this parameter, we were able to win several, um, several new clients, for example, people in the healthcare industry who have a lot of concerns around data protection and things like that. Um, and so. It, it's great because we actually do less work. We don't have to write a log line, and, but, but customers love it. Um, I, so I think this is something for all of you uh, with EU-based businesses you should really be pushing on. And, and we see even uh, we're able to get European, uh, American customers because they trust European businesses around data protection more than they trust American businesses. Um, OK, um, and the final point is we focus on doing one thing well. So again, this is our competition, the Google Maps uh, platform. If you're really interested in, I was going to show you, um, you know, the screenshot of what their site looks like compared to ours. But you know, if you go to the documentation, you know, I had to take a screenshot of the whole page because geocoding is well below the fold. Right? It gets completely lost in one of the, as, as one of the, the subservices of what they do. Um, and, you know, I really try to impress upon customers, look, you know, Google does their thing well, but your need is well below the fold. You know, do they really care about it, or is it project 257? Whereas, otherwise, you could work with us, um, and, and we do one thing and one thing only, and we provide a geocoding API. Um, and sometimes that's actually quite hard, in that customers do come to us with other needs, uh, the services related to geocoding, and they say, well, do you do maps? So we say, no, we don't do maps. Um, they say, well, do you do routing? This is something, a common use case for geocoding is I want to do routing of my trucks. And things. We say, no, we don't do that. Do we do IP address to location? No, we don't do that, OK? And then at that point, they're usually like, well, what about do you do? No, we don't do it, OK? Um, but what do I tell these customers then when they come to me? Easy. I say, look, we're the experts over here doing our tricks on our geocoding skateboard. But if you need maps, here's another guy who's just like us doing the, running their business and go work with him. And so I have a network of other companies that do similar things, that, that do the adjacent things, and I send the customers over to them. And likewise, when that guy has someone that needs geocoding, he sends them over to me. And we really try to help each other. And I, I think that's something also that I encourage all of you in your businesses um, very often you will get requests um, from customers for adjacent type services, 
and they'll say, you know, it's very tempting to say, well, this guy wants to give me some money for something. It's not really what we do. Let me try to figure out, can we build it? Can we add it on? And then, you know, pretty soon you end up with that page where your core service is way down at the bottom. Um, and instead, what we do is we hand off to others in the API ecosystem. So if any of you get requests for geocoding, send them on my way. And, and likewise, I'll send people um, to you. Um, so the end result of that is we have a very understandable offering. Okay, and again, it's all about contrasting ourselves against Google with their technically very good offering, but very complex um, offering. Um, of course, we're not, we're not the only people doing this. There, there are a lot of people uh, competing against the internet giants uh, in all kinds of different categories. Um, and that's also a weakness that someone like Google suffers. For every little sub product that they have, they have direct competitors. Um, and we actually try to learn quite a bit by not so much just looking at other APIs, but looking at other services that, uh, that are competing against the giant. And how can we um, you know, borrow some of the ideas that they've, they've innovated with and, and use that to, um, to improve our own service? So DuckDuckGo is a, is a search engine heavily focused on privacy. Uh, they've been growing, growing very rapidly in the last couple of years as, as privacy becomes a, a major concern. Um, uh, but it's not just not just bigger companies. Um, so, for example, we we pay for this service, Fathom Analytics. Uh, it's a it's a competitor to Google Analytics. If you go into Google Analytics, it's super complicated, and then you get a pop up that tries to sell you YouTube ads and things, and you can you it's very hard now to even see how many users you have or whatever. Whereas Fathom Analytics, they do the basics of analytics very well, um, and more importantly, they're not sharing that data with anyone. So. It would be very hypocritical for me to say, oh, we care about your privacy, um, but when you're on our site, we're going to use Google Analytics to track you, and Google's going to get that data. So we don't. We work with someone like this, a small provider who is focused on uh, in their niche. Um, I, I should also say I, I'm not trying to pick on just Google. Um, the, the challenges that uh, Google faces and, and their weak points are the same with others. Um, I'm, I'm sure uh, many of you know or, or are aware of um, I've used AWS, Amazon's uh, cloud computing offering. Uh, AWS, is, it's unbelievable how complicated it's become. I mean, this is the What's New page, and I, I, I hovered over this drop down. I mean, this is like only, we're, we only get from A to D of all the different services that they now offer, right? I mean, they have hundreds of services. You can't, I bet no human on earth can possibly keep the overview of all the things that AWS is doing. Um, so it's so easy for things to get lost there. And I, I think there's a lot of opportunity there to pick those off one by one and say, yes, AWS offers X, but, but we do it. Um, we're the experts at it. We do only it, and we're better. Um, and that issue around pricing confusion, I'm going to guess every single one of you that's an AWS customer has, at the end of the month, gotten a bill where that you do not understand, because it has become so complex. right? And it's a major turnoff from using that service. Um, and um, so. My core point here is that APIs are infrastructure, right? And, and for our customers, we want our customers to, to, to be able to rely on our service. And that, that requires a few things. Of course, we need to be good at the basic service that we provide, right? When someone sends me a geocoding request, I need to be able to answer it well and quickly and all these kinds of things. Um, but in the realm of infrastructure, predictable or even being boring is good, right? The vast majority of our customers they do not really want to chit chat with me about geocoding. I mean, if, 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 if they do, I'm happy to go get a beer with them and we can talk about it. But for the vast majority of them, what they want is it just works, right? And then after that, they want to forget about it and they want to know that the, um, you know, and they want to be happy with it. So in this, based on that insight, when we look at some of the weaknesses of Google, things like unpredictable pricing, um, unpredictable pricing is not boring. It's, it's, it's very scary for the customers. Um, and so really what we always try to think about is when, when someone comes to our service, what they want to see is, does this solve my problem? So I need some geocoding. Does, does this do what I need? Uh, are they dependable? Are they going to be here today and tomorrow? Um, and is the price reasonable? Okay, and that means all those things, like I said, like, uh, do I understand what the price is in my currency? And is it going to stay that way? Is it going to change? Is it going to jump around? Um, all these kinds of things. So I encourage you, as you position your products, to think about these things and really um, ask yourself these few questions when someone lands on your site or is introduced to your, to your service for the first time.
Um, I guess another point is when you're competing with the giant, you do need to be patient. Rome wasn't built in a day, so um, you know it's, it's not going to happen overnight. Um, you need to be very stable and dependable and reliable. So here's our, our uptime graphs. Um, and above all, you, you need to not get distracted from those core things. So a lot of people in the API space like to, like to talk about technologies, and we can have fun arguments about technologies, about should you use A or B or whatever. Um, if anyone afterwards wants to have like a, a, a fun argument with me, you can, you can, we can do that. We use Perl, and a lot of people hate Perl. But, um, but the thing is, customers don't care at all. Okay, and so, um, you know, coming back to my analogy of skating, this is me out there doing my tricks, right? Um, and I don't have time for to to get into these arguments about technology and everything because I'm 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 busy skating, doing learning my tricks, pushing my business forward. Okay, so um, so hopefully that was that was useful for me. Let me let me uh, for you. Let me briefly um, recap some of the things. Um, so you shouldn't be scared of competing with the giants. It's definitely possible. They have their weaknesses. Of course, they also have their strengths. So you know, be cognizant of those. Um, but I think by by you can find space for your product if you focus on doing one thing well, um, and never forget that that simplicity and stability uh, in the API space and the infrastructure space is is what customers value. Um, we're almost at the end here. Uh, very quickly, I, if you are into the Geo stuff and you want to learn more about that, I run a Geo event, uh, a Geo meetup, um, also here in Barcelona. Our next one will be 2nd of October, so come along if you're interested. Um, I know some of you are developers. If anyone wants to write an SDK for one of our, um, for our API, happy to pay you to do that. Um, so it's a good chance to do some work in whatever your favorite language is if you want, if we don't already have it. And other than that, then... Um, if that raised some questions, then uh, please get in touch, and uh, happy to talk with you about that with you. Thanks.